Welcome to our revision summary on gravitational potential energy. First thing we need to remember then is whenever we lift an object off the ground at all, it has gravitational potential energy or GPE. Now what we'll find is that the amount of GPE that an object has is dependent on three things. First one is the mass of the object. Second one is the height it's raised off the ground. And the third is the gravitational field strength. Now, what we'll find is when we're talking about objects on Earth, then we can actually increase the amount of GPE that it has by either increasing the mass or increasing the height. So do go careful if they ask you one of these questions on the exam paper about how we could increase gravitational potential energy, then don't just say change the mass, make sure you say increase the mass or increase the height. What we've got at the top there then is the calculation that you'll find on page two of your exam booklet. So again, we don't have to memorize it at all because it's printed on page two for us. So the calculation then is that the change in GPE, and because it's energy is measured in joules, is the mass in kilograms times by the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram times by the change in height, which is measured in meters. So that can actually be summarized down to the change in GPE equals MGH, okay? Because basic rules of how we use letters in our equations, if we just write MGH, then that means M times G times H. So mass times gravitational field strength times the change in height. So to give you an example of the kind of question we might get here, you might get one long lines of find the change in GPE when a book of mass 1.2 kilograms is lifted 1.5 meters and placed on a shelf. So in our question there, we've got our mass 1.2 kilograms, our height 1.5 meters. And because we're on earth, then the gravitational field strength is 10. So all we need to do is plug those numbers into our formula, which we picked up from page two, two times by 10 times by 1.5, gives us our answer of 18 joules. Now we may well have a further question to do with this where they might give you an example of a bouncing ball. Now if we look at the picture in the middle of the screen there we can see that in that first image on the left hand side of it then we've got 200 joules of gravitational potential energy and no joules of kinetic energy. So that tells us our ball is stationary at that point being held in the air. If we then release the ball, what's going to happen is it's going to start to accelerate towards the ground and that gravitational potential energy is going to decrease and the kinetic energy will increase. So we can see in that second picture there, we've got 100 joules of GPE, 100 joules of our kinetic energy. As the ball then hits the floor, we've got no gravitational potential energy. It's all in kinetic. So we've got 200 joules of kinetic energy and zero of our GPE. Now they might ask you if the ball would bounce back to the same height we dropped it from. If they do ask you that, then we need to say the answer is no. Because what actually happens is, as that ball is hitting the ground, then we're going to be transferring some of that energy to its surroundings. So some of that gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, as the ball falls and hits the floor, is basically going to be lost to the surroundings. So it'll be transferred to the heat energy, okay? Because as we have friction, we generate heat. So that's the reason why it will never bounce back to the same height that we dropped it from, because some of that original 200 joules of energy has been transferred to heating the surroundings.